Hello, friends, and welcome to the Refuge Podcast, where we cultivate our faith in the shelter of God's word. I'm your host, Jennifer Elwood. For the past 12 years, from December 1st to the 24th, I've read the Gospel of Luke a chapter a day, and it's been life-changing. In the past, I permitted all the stress to provoke me during the holidays, but discovered that that this practice permeates peace into the Christmas season. And every year I'm determined to bring more people just like you with me on this biblical journey. For the first season of this podcast, we will count up to Christmas through the Gospel of Luke together and open and receive gifts from scripture to prepare our hearts for a peace-filled Christmas with some help from my friends. Today we are going to open the gift of transformation. Our portion of scripture is from Luke 19, 8 through 10 in the New Living Translation. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor, Lord, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham, for the son of man came to seek and save those who are lost. So here to help me open this gift is my guest, Danielle Foreman founder of the Renewing Motherhood podcast and blog, where she helps mamas cultivate calmness, discover hope, and experience joy. We met as interns for Denise Pass's Seeing Deep Ministry, both contributed to Denise's book, Mommy and Me, Cooking with Jesus, and have been collaborating in our online ministries ever since. Welcome to the show, Danielle. Thanks, Jennifer. So great to be here. I'm excited about our chat today. Me too. So to get us started, can you tell us a little bit about your favorite Christmas tradition? Oh, so many favorites. Got to limit it to one, huh? Oh boy. Um, Okay. Well, we as a family actually celebrate the 12 days of Christmas. So yes, we do. It It is no longer for us a one day celebration and then, oh, bummer, it's done. No, no. We actually do 12 days all the way through Epiphany. I love that. Yeah. So that in itself is a tradition. Um, But I guess one thing within those 12 days would be we have a baking day and we bake all of our favorite Christmas cookies and deliver them to neighbors. I love that. We did that a couple years ago and that was like so much fun making all the little treats and all the little stuff. It was awesome. (laughs) It's, it's so fun. So um, I have to tell you that I've personally had some pretty amazing interactions with Zacchaeus well beyond the song that we learned in childhood about Zacchaeus <laughs> being a wee little man. Um, in fact, I learned that actually our names mean the same thing, purity. Yes, Jennifer means purity or, uh, you know, white, yep. that kind of thing. And Zacchaeus also means pure. That was like a big eye-opening thing for me. I know it's kind of wild, huh? Yeah. (laughs) Um, So in his story, we see this beautiful transformation Mm -hmm. from an absolutely crooked guy that's stealing from his own people to make the, the ruling people in his country rich. And we see this purity of heart that changed this transformation that happens because of Jesus. And I thought since you are all about renewing specifically Mm. in the realm of motherhood, (laughs) I know that the gift of transformation is something you've experienced in a powerful way. So how has God opened the gift of transformation in your life? Well, I, I would say that it's been over the course of my entire life. Mm. But I, like most of us, we cannot see it in the moments. We don't really realize it until those moments are done, sometimes seasons later or years later. Um, But I would say through his providential hand leading me in certain places I didn't expect to be, um, bringing people into my life to help cultivate that transformation in ways that I still don't know today, but I'm changed because of them. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe it was one thing they said or books they led me to read or just walking with me in certain seasons. But I don't, I don't think that I really 
started to feel God's transformation in my life until about nine years ago when my sister passed away. Mm. And in, in those seasons of years later, through the grieving process and through um, maybe even questioning some of my faith, um, questioning life in general, um, God still guiding me and transforming me, bringing people into my life, uh, leading me to specific churches um, that would just speak love and truth, um, rally around me um, to just always point me continually to Christ. Um, I would say his faithfulness is a huge way that he has transformed me um, and encouraged that transformation to his image. Mm. I love that. That is yeah. just so beautiful. And I, it's amazing how when we go through these really, really hard seasons, that that's like when we can almost expect God to just like whoosh, <laughs> show mm-hmm. up yep. and we don't have to go looking for him. He's just there. And he's leading and guiding and going, I cut you, sister. I yeah. have you, my oh, yeah. daughter. You are mine. And this is the way to walk. And in that way, we get this absolute fantastic sense of transformation in our lives because of Jesus showing up and taking care of us. And it's just like something so important to remember we're getting really close to Christmas day and the, the, the pressure's probably mounting a little bit. I'm sure yep. I know what it is for me. <laughs> there are meals to plan and stuffed wraps still. And we are traveling on Christmas day this year. And I'm like, Oh, what was I thinking? <laughs> but I think it's just uh, so important to keep this message of transformation just right in front of us as we get close to this and realize that the, th- the hard things we're going through right now are, is something that God is going to use in our lives if we allow him to. I, I like that you said that um, to keep the idea of transformation in, in the forefront, because when we're going through, even if we're not going through major trials, you know, that could be just, um, just general overwhelm and chaos, but even with other trials, you know, minor or major, it's really hard to realize that whatever God's doing in your life currently, it is for your good and it is for his glory. And however he is transforming you, refining you, um, sharpening you, however he is doing that in your life, um, it, it is hard, yes. But the more you just lean into it, the more you're going to be refined for, for your good and his glory. Mm. So for someone that's struggling to receive the gift of transformation right now, what is one piece of advice that you would, um, that you would have for them? So I, in, in preparation, I, I found a passage that I I like to share and it's Mm. the transforming your mind passage in Romans 12, Mm. when Paul is talking about being transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing, you may discern what the will of God is and what is good, acceptable, and perfect. And he goes on to talk about um, how to lean into that. Mm -hmm. And so my advice would be exactly Paul's words. Let your love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be sinful in zeal, but be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, constant in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. And I think if we're doing all of those things, that's going to help us just lean into the transformation process. Okay. We're going to be steadfast and faithful to exactly these things that we know God says that he wants us to do and just hold fast. 
love that. Thank you so much for opening that up to us. I, and I pray that people will receive this gift really yeah. solidly today. Thank you so much for being Thank on the you. show. Absolutely. So where can people find you and what all of what goodies have you got going on in your ministry? Okay, so you can find me um, on the Renewing Motherhood blog at daniellehope.com. Um, I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest at <laughs> Mrs. Danielle Hope. <laughs> um, but my favorite place to hang out is Instagram. Okay. So, but I'm, I'm at all those places. Um, and um, I like to send out regular encouragement to subscribers um, different verses and, and devotionals and types of things to encourage mamas and in their walk. Absolutely. And you have a podcast as well. Yes. 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 A renewing motherhood podcast. Love it. And am I correct in that you have a devotional coming soon? I do. Yes. It, uh, revolves all around the 31 uh, prayers for renewing motherhood. And how to dive in to that and experience more joy motherhood through knowing Christ. I love that. So people should sign, should head to your website and sign up for yep. your email notifications and they'll know when it's coming. Oh yeah. They'll know all the things. Yeah. Yes. I'd love, I'd love to connect with you. Um, and if you were encouraged, you know, through, through this time, um, you can send me a message on Instagram or Facebook and I'd like to connect with you too. I love that. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thanks, Jenny. Thank you again to Danielle Foreman for helping us open the gift of transformation. I love that God uses the greatest challenges in our lives to bring the greatest transformation. That gives me so much hope. Our prayer for us is that we keep God's transformational power at the forefront of our hearts and minds as we experience the ups and downs of the rest of the holiday season. You can connect with Danielle at Renewing Motherhood with the links in the show notes. And if you'd like to connect with me, head over to jenniferelwood.com. And you can grab a copy of Counting Up to Christmas 24 Gifts from the Gospel of Luke at amazon.com. You've been listening to the Refuge Podcast with Jennifer Elwood, where we cultivate our faith in the shelter of God's word. Music.